The following is an Akadasi lecture given by His Holiness Jaya Bhattaka Swami on June 10th, 1984. The class begins with a reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 2nd Canto, Chapter 10, Verse 12. Dabhyang karmacha kalascha Swabhavo jiva evacha Yadanugrahata santi Nasanti yadupekshaya Dabhyang karmacha kalascha Swabhavo jiva evacha Yadanugrahata santi Nasanti yadupekshaya Translation by His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> One should know definitely that all material ingredients, activities, time, modes, and <clears throat> the living entities who are meant to enjoy them all exist by His mercy only. And as soon as He does not care for them, everything becomes non existent. Translation with repetition. One should know. One should know. Definitely, Definitely, that all material ingredients, that all material ingredients activities, time, activities, modes, modes and, the and the living entities who are meant to enjoy them all, who are meant to enjoy them all exist, by his mercy only. exist by His mercy only. And as soon as He does not care for them, for them. Everything becomes non existent. Everything becomes non existent. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Jai Nithai Gauru Chandra Jai Siti Jagannath Badabharam. Purport The living entities are the enjoyers of the material ingredients. Time, modes, etc. Because they want to lord it over the material nature. The Lord is the supreme enjoyer and the living entities are meant to assist the Lord in His enjoyment. And thus participate in the transcendental enjoyment of everyone. The enjoyer and the enjoyed both participate in, 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 in enjoyment. But deluded by the illusory energy, the living entities want to become the enjoyer like the Lord. Although they are not meant for such enjoyment, <clears throat> the jivas or the living entities are mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita as the superior nature or paraprakriti of the Lord. And so also it is mentioned in the Vishnu Purana. Therefore the living entities are never the purushas or the factual enjoyers. As such, the spirit of enjoyment by the living entity in the material world is false. In the material world, the living entities are pure, in, excuse me, in the spiritual world, the living entities are pure in nature, and therefore they are associates in the enjoyment of the Supreme Lord. In the material world, the spirit of everyone The spirit of enjoyment by the living entities by dint of their own actions, karma, becomes gradually faded by the laws of nature and thus the illusory energy dictates in the ear of the conditioned souls to become one with the Lord. This is the last snare of the illusory energy. When the last illusion is also cleared off by the mercy of the Lord, the living entity again becomes reinstated in his original position and thus becomes actually liberated. And for this attainment of liberation from the material clutches, the Lord creates the material world. 
maintains it for some time, 1,000 years of his measurement, as is stated in the previous verse. And then again, annihilates. Living entities are therefore completely dependent on the mercy of the Lord and all their so-called enjoyments by scientific improvement are crushed into dust when the Lord desires. So everyone is coming from the Lord. Janmad yasya yataha. He is the origin. He is Adi, original. He is the cause of all causes. He is the Parama Purusha. He is the supreme enjoyer. In the material world, there are many, many enjoyers. But this is not the real position of the jiva or living entity. The living entity is not meant to be an enjoyer. It is meant to the living entity, he is meant to enjoy, be enjoyed. So in the spiritual world, whether the devotees have male or female form, they're all prakriti or energies of the Lord, and they help to give the Lord enjoyment, and therefore they also enjoy transcendental bliss. Beyond what to speak of uh, this material uh, happiness beyond even the bliss of uh, liberation. <clears throat> In fact, liberation is described to be just like a small little uh, cup of water as compared to the ocean. Literally, the Vedas describe that the calf of a cow's hoof in the water, in the mud, the amount of water that that little hoof print holds, you compare that to how much water does the ocean hold, like the Pacific Ocean. And that is how much more happiness there is in serving Krishna and giving Him happiness. Because we are parts and parcels of Krishna, we are His minute fragment. Therefore, when Krishna is pleased, we automatically become satisfied. We achieve transcendental happiness. So in the spiritual world, everyone is prakriti, para-prakriti, or the spiritual energies of the Lord. But in this material world, whether in a material male body or female body, everyone is falsely assuming the attitude of enjoyers. That is why, you see, especially in the West, where this spirit of enjoyment has uh, been promoted, irregardless of caste, color, creed, sex, religion, whatever, spirit of enjoyment has been promoted so much that uh, everyone has entered into the uh, field of competition for who is going to be the greater enjoyer. And if anyone stands in the way, then that is a matter for which mass movements, political uprisings, and so on can be held in the name of so-called liberation movements of various kinds. So, the basic idea is everyone wants the equal enjoyment, equal opportunity to enjoy. That means everybody is competing to be an enjoyer. And ultimately, that is why we're in this material world, is because somehow or another, we want to also be an equal enjoyer with God. Why should God enjoy more than us? Why should he be the supreme person? But the original supreme person is always original and supreme. There's nothing you can do about it. 
It's not a democratic process. We happen to be his eternal parts and parcel. And in this uh, false position as enjoyers, actually there's no happiness. So after getting bored with trying to enjoy in an unnatural situation, then Maya, seeing that we're starting to lose our uh, enthusiasm to enjoy the senses, whispers in our ear that you can merge in the existence of the Lord, you can become one with God. And then they become very so-called renounced, detached from gross material things, but actually their nature, is, uh, their condition is to become much more fallen because then one thing is to be an enjoyer imitating the Lord. The other thing is to actually want to become one with the Lord. That is a greater offense. So these are different stages of illusion. So although we respect sometimes these uh, Gana yogis as transcendentalists, actually impersonalists were not really, they were not appreciated by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at all. In fact, he said, Mayavadi, Hoyo, Krishna, Aparadi. That an impersonalist is actually an offender of Krishna. Because the impersonalists, they're directly trying to become one with Krishna. Or they say that, well, we're one with God. Everyone is God. So in this way, they're actually insulting Krishna's transcendental and absolute position. And in so many other ways, when they preach to establish their false philosophies, they have to also, whenever the idea of the Supreme Personality of Godhead comes up, they have to denounce that in order to maintain their impersonal idea. So in this way they become offenders of Krishna. So why does Krishna come down amongst all these competitors and offenders and so on? Because in this material world there are also many devotees of the Lord. Krishna describes that there are two kinds of living entities. Even those who want to enjoy there are those who want to enjoy, but at the same time they have respect and devotion for the Lord. And actually they approach the Lord to help them in their material conquests. Similarly, <clears throat> on the other side of the coin, there are those who are wanting to enjoy, but they are demons. And they want to do so at any cost, even against the sanctioned methods given by the Lord. So amongst those devotees who are trying to enjoy, <clears throat> there are devotees who are uh, at different stages of purity. That devotee who is worshipping Krishna directly, simply for the desire to please Krishna and not for any other material motive not for any material motive, that devotee is considered to be a pure devotee. And to satisfy them, Krishna comes down as well as to attract the other devotees to what is the real purpose of life, what are, is the real happiness in life. That trying to enjoy this uh, dead material energy is actually... A futile attempt, which leads one into deeper and deeper stages of frustration until one contemplates committing spiritual suicide, known as uh, merging. It's a spiritual suicide. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Krishna, they came down to attract the living entities, to give them an opportunity that you're looking for happiness, uh, this is where the real happiness is. In transcendental exchanges with the Lord. <clears throat> when Krishna came down, everyone in the entire world became a Krishna conscious. 
Whenever Krishna is present, it polarizes things. The devotees, they immediately become attracted. <coughs> and they all want to uh, discuss Krishna. And the demons, they also become immediately attracted, but they also want to discuss Krishna, but they are envious. So all of the demons, they came forward, and those who became fully Krishna conscious, they got the opportunity of being annihilated by Krishna materially, and spiritually liberated, which is what they wanted. But they didn't have to go through any more birth. And the devotees, they were able to leave this material world and to uh, transfer themselves somewhere to Krishna's pastimes and to, in this way, also achieve liberation from the influence of the three modes of material nature in the association of the Supreme Lord. Now, many souls were there who did not get that opportunity. They were not humans or otherwise uh, available for being liberated by the Lord. So again the Lord came as his own devotee, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to attract and to uplift and to send off these fallen souls back to home, back to Godhead. So, Lord Chaitanya was just a small uh, baby, only two years old, because today is Sikadasi. There was a story how uh, Lord Chaitanya, he was crying and crying as a little Nimai. And normally whenever Lord Nimai would cry, his uh, parents and other neighbor women, they'd start to clap their hands and chant, Hari Bol, Hari Bol. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. In different chants, in this way, Krishna would, uh, Krishna Chaitanya, in his baby form, he would stop crying. But this day, no matter how hard they chanted, he wouldn't stop. It was very puzzling for them. Finally, they called Jagannath Misra, and he came, and he asked Nimai, why you are crying? So Nimai, in his little, he's only like two years old, in his little broken voice, he's saying that, <clears throat> I want to go to uh, Jagadish Pandit and Hiranya Pandit's house. Jagannath Mr. was very surprised at why he wants to go there. Two of his intimate friends, but they live about two miles away in the other side of the river. In, in, in what today is very near the house of Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur, behind there. Why does he want to go there? So why do you want to go there? Because today they're having a big feast. Even Jagannath missed it and know they're having a big Why they're having a big feast? It's because it's Hari Vasar. It's the Lord's Day. It's a Kadasi. Today's a Kadasi, yes. How did little Nimai know that today, or even what a codice was? What two-year-old child knows what a codice is? Even? And how did he know that Jagandish, Pandit, and Hiranya were having a big festival? Was, this for, was it real? Were they really having a festival? Then Lord Nimai saw his father was hesitating. He started crying again. So that became so unbearable. It's all right, I'll take you. Laughing and he stopped the seat for him. <coughs> and uh, he was laughing and uh, he was so uh, happy. So little <coughs> Jagannath Misra, he carried little Nimai over to uh, the house of. Uh, let's give at least that be the least. <clears throat> the uh, house of uh, Hira, uh, Hiranya and uh, Jagadish Pandit. Sure enough, because for us it's a fast day, but for the Lord it's not a fast day. We can offer Him grain. So, they had so many, 60, 100 preparations, all spread out in front of the, in, in, a, in a decorative way, in front of the Lord's uh, 
<coughs> altar. Actually, we want to do that for the Panihati festival, but uh, well, we did as well as we could. One time we were invited, just to just off the point slightly, we were invited to one Vaishnava's house. He had a, not his house, but his uh, Lord Chaitanya temple for Julan. And for Julan, it's customary in Bengal to put on little dioramas, moving dioramas. They have, or it was for, excuse me, for Ras Lila. And they have Ras, they have everyone, all the big uh, people. It's very common to find mechanical Ras Lila. Where they have Radha Krishna and Radha in the, in the center, and then little gopis, or Radha Krishna, Radha gopi, I mean Krishna gopi, or just single gopis, like at least eight, and they spinning around, and some of them more intricate, they have the gopis turning this way, and they have them going that way, it's like orbiting, and Radha Krishna swing, you know, they have all kind of little arrangements. And then they show other dioramas of different avatars. So we were invited to Tushar Kanti, uh, Tarun Kanti Ghosh's uh, temple. He was, his grandfather was a famous Vaishnava who wrote uh, books on uh, Lord Chaitanya and was a contemporary of Bhaktivinod. He was the founding editor of the, uh, at that time, the largest uh, English uh, newspaper and the largest Bengali newspaper. Now they're the second largest. <clears throat> but to combine, they have more uh, uh, circulation. So anyway, he's very prominent, uh, very prominent family. His grandfather used to say that Bhaktivinoda Thakur was the seventh Goswami. So Prabhupada was very kind to them, and uh, he said we should go there and patronize that temple. So we went. And there I had the big uh, deity of Lord Chaitanya, and they kept 24-hour kirtan going on all the time. Any Vaishnava would come by, was hungry or something, they could stay there and he'd feed them, but they'd have to take shifts in chanting. and he'd keep. Somehow he always had uh, 24-hour kirtan going on. So whenever you drive by, if you stop, you can hear. His house is just by the road out to Mayapur, you can hear. Hare Krishna, you know, little some kirtan going on. <laughs> One man, usually even one man or two men. Ba boom, boom, going on. So they offered this time they had say about twenty devotees, and for each devotee, for each preparation, say they had about sixty-four preparations per devotee. I mean, sixty-four different preparations, and for each devotee they had little clay cups about this big, like little flat ones, and they put all the preparations that were going to be given to all the devotees in the cups, and they spread it all out in a, in a, in a huge uh, triangle in front of the deity. And then they had, of course, a big curtain in front, and they were offering, and when they were offering this over, them, they opened the curtain, and you saw literally thousands of little clay cups. Of course, it wasn't a good process to keep the prashad hot. But the visual effect was fantastic. <laughs> it was a uh, amazing thing. So, like this, Hiranya and Jagadish Pandit, they had somehow or another arranged all the preparations in a very decorative way in front of the Lord. And you could see it was something very special. So, I mean, I've seen a few like this nice decorative things. So, some idea, but I'm sure that we couldn't really describe how wonderfully they did it because they're all being pure devotees and it must have been so special because Krishna himself came there in the form of an imai. And then Jagad, Jagannath Misra, I explained to them, well, this, well, this is why I've come here, that the little nimai, he's, uh, he's uh, said you're having a big festival and he was crying because you didn't invite and we wanted to go, he wanted to go there. And they hadn't told anybody because it was a codice, so no one could eat the prashadams anyway. And uh, Nimai said, I want the feast. Little two year old. And they thought, well, he's two years. Then they said, well, listen, if he must be like somehow Krishna must be speaking through him. We didn't tell anybody but the deity, and he knows. So if he takes the prashad, we take it that this is. Uh, I'm not sure whether they offered him the boga too or it was the prashad. They took it uh, some very special sign that the Lord 
has sent over Nimai. Little did they know that actually it was the Lord Himself came over to accept their offering. We may make some special offering and the Lord Himself may come like this and accept it. There's a saying in the, the, in the uh, Puranas that uh, Otiti Narayan that an unknown, unexpected guest who just shows up should be treated like Narayana. Because in the hitting purport is that sometimes even Narayana has come in disguise to his devotee's house. And just like that time when uh, there was that Rik, was it Rikti Maharaj, Rikti was the one who was uh, so Ranti, Ranti, he was so charitable. I think this mentioned in the Bhagavatam, isn't it? Ranti Maharaj, that uh, Ranti Dev, <coughs> that he he was so charitable that uh, he was fasting for some time or something. He had his meal, and then uh, they offered. And then immediately, just when he was about to take, well, well, who was it? Came different personalities came. A dog eater came. I'm starving, and so then he gave I gave him half. And he was about to eat, and he had been fasting a long time. He was really ravenously hungry. Then who came? Just one after another, people, old lady came, and this one, that one, they all. Uh, so finally he just had like one glass of water left. And then some guy, I'm really, some, some person, I'm starving for water. I remember that <laughs> he gave the water away. And he was about ready to die. At that time, all these people who had come there all assembled, and then they... <coughs> They changed their form to the original form and they were different demigods. And even I think Vishnu himself came. I'm not sure. I can't remember all the details. And uh, they, they, they benedicted him. So the unknown guest, someone just comes. In India still today, when I used to go on uh, Sankirtan with uh, even up to 20 devotees, we would never make any arrangement where to stay. Of course, they don't have any KO, KAO camps, KOA camp, whatever. They don't have any arrangement. We just drive off, and at four in the afternoon or three in the afternoon, wherever you were, we go to the. Uh, we'd ask around who's the person in this town that has big religious festivals or does Hari Nam in his house or something like that, and then we'd find out who the or who the wealthiest person in the town is, and we would drive up. Go to his door and ask if he know any where where we could stay. We would come to the town to preach Hari Nam, and it, invariably they'd say, "No, you must stay here." <laughs> that was the wonderful thing about India. So then uh, he'd give us. If they're very big, they have special guest rooms that they keep just for guests, a little bit on the outside of not within their house, and if. Sometimes they even bring you right into their house and their whole family will move out of rooms so, because they spread out naturally, you know. No, nobody leaves the rooms empty unless, you know, normally. They, they, em they empty out the rooms and they put you in. So then, we were at a low-budget program, so what we do is, uh, I'd give up a shopping. We said, plus, we don't like to eat the food. They always want to give you food cooked by uh, them and we don't, it's embarrassing to ask if they eat onions or drink coffee. It's all these, you know, we have all these rules. <coughs> so we normally cook ourselves and we carry deities and offer to our deities. So then we send uh, the shopper to the uh, gentleman and, and ask him that, where is the marketplace? We want to go out and buy food for a deity. <coughs> and he'd get all of a sudden, I'd get all excited. What? Grab the list and say, what do you want? You can't, you, when you're a guest in my house, how can I allow you to go to the market and, and buy? What will people say? I will get these things. And it was very exciting. Sometimes, we just had to depend on Krishna. Sometimes, you know, they'd be out. Or this, but usually we'd find, we never went a day without somehow or another finding a place to stay. It was really just depending on Krishna. 
Even, uh, and that was about 10, 15, 8 people, 20 people, we got a little shook up, but <coughs> he usually kept it under a dozen, so. So we have four, a few people, four. Or <laughs> but we didn't stay long. We just stay one or two days and go on. Prabhupada said, guests shouldn't stay too long. And uh, in this way, we gave the opportunity to the grihastas that they could do some Krishna seva. And in many cases, they became life members, so they became very favorable because of that associations. Seeing a whole have arti in their house and devotees chanting japa, the children would come forward and we teach them how to chant japa. It was very wonderful. So, uh, in this way, uh, they were treating uh, atiti or unexpected guests, just like uh, Narayan or just like as if the Lord himself had come. And they would say something, no, no. Atiti Narayana, we must. Uh... In fact, one time I came, I went to a temple when I was doing research for hidden tirthas. I was looking for the birthplace of Krishna Das Kaviraj, and nobody knew where it was. So I had a, a friend uh, who's the head uh, priest and the uh, descendant of Gadadhar Das Pandit, Das Gadadhar, at Katwa, Nandananda. Goswami. And so I went to him to ask if he could give one of his uh, followers or associates uh, to to guide us because uh, I heard it was in that area and no one could tell us where it was. He said, no, you have to cross over a river and there's no bridge. So I had to put our jeep on a uh, bamboo boat, which is just like... And any man who thought the jeep would fall in the river, but like this. He said, you have to take the... He said, well, I'll give you someone, don't worry. So that time it was 12 noon, so he said, well, we were, it's a long way from Mayapur. We've been going since the morning, so you kindly, uh, if you can give the person as soon as possible, we'll be off. He said, no way. You're not going until you take prasadam. I said, no, no, it's so late, we have to go on, you know, we have to do the Lord's service, you know, we can't think about ourselves. He said, I'm the pujari here, you've come in the Lord's house, you're the Lord's guest, you're doing the Lord's work, but the Lord, he also has his business. His business is to serve his devotee, you're not leaving unless you take prasana. <laughs> He says, will you disobey or refuse the Lord's mercy? The Lord. <laughs> Say it that way. <laughs> and uh, it just happened that day, they had a very special prashad, four or five different types of green leafy vegetables. Especially the Lord likes the things from uh, the forest and just wild uh, type of vegetables. And they had very many special preparations. So, in this way sometimes... Uh, we were prevailed upon. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, here he just suddenly showed up in their house. You know, they could think, well, he's an unexpected visitor, Atiti Narayan. But in this case, he actually is Krishna himself. He was Narayana. And uh, that was the special mercy. But they took it that how could he know all these offerings? He must be actually the Lord himself. Or he must be, I've been inspired by the Lord, so this is like a special auspicious sign. We should take it as something very extraordinary. So, somehow or another, the more that we can develop this service attitude, that is actually beneficial to us. The enjoying attitude is a kind of a perverted situation, which ultimately doesn't satisfy us. That's why... Maya then when we're, knows we're not going to be satisfied, so her last trick is that, all right, you now merge. You now become one with God. You become God yourself, which is a big trick of Maya. When you become frustrated from enjoying, then we should actually change our attitude and become active in serving the Lord. But because we already have this enjoying attitude, this idea to become one with God is just a type of extension of that enjoying attitude. So we should be very fearful 
about this impersonal concept of God realization. That concept is very, very dangerous. It is disguised as something very detached, very good, very auspicious or renounced. But actually, it is a, a greater kind of uh, enjoying, selfish, and actually non-beneficial attitude. But it's disguised, so a person thinks, well, I'm now very detached. And people think, like I was on a radio show in New Orleans, and the person said, well, you're coming here, and uh, isn't this, uh, you have so many big temples, and you're giving out prasadam and doing so many, but uh, is it the real purpose of Krishna consciousness to lose your ego, to become nothing, to, you know, he started speaking all Zen Buddhist ideas which is the, the void, and we had to, uh, over the radio, we had to somehow or another try to steer him on the right track. But this is the general, that was Joe, Joe somebody, the announcer, famous announcer in New Orleans, 21 years he did that program, Joe something, I forget Joe. He said his friends call him Joe, so we call him Joe. Joke. So, <clears throat> we <clears throat> find this uh, general misunderstanding. People think that Krishna consciousness means to renounce everything and give everything away. And uh, in India, it's not uncommon to find people with millions of uh, rupees and so many possessions. They think, well, before I become a devotee, I should give it all away to my relatives. And then I'll come empty-handed as I am to Krishna. Prabhupada used to say that, uh, why give it all away to your relatives? You should give to Krishna at least uh, 50%. In fact, even keep 25% uh, for emergency, for yourself. Family members don't need more than 25%. So, that was the example given by Rupa and Sanatana. Because we use all of these energies in Krishna's service, so therefore we are not uh, going to be put into difficulty. Normally people want the material things to enjoy, and they think that giving that up, that's the opposite of enjoyment, therefore they are transcendental. But that's actually the impersonal idea. We take material things, instead of trying to enjoy them, we offer them for the, to the service of Krishna for His enjoyment. In this way, we should think of so many ideas how to expand the devotional service of the Lord for His enjoyment, and that will be the most purifying for us. And of course, Krishna is especially satisfied when his devotee is served. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Siya Dvaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrindha Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So one point, of course, is that even at the age of two, Lord Chaitanya was preaching Ekadasi, the importance of following Ekadasi. So this Ekadasi is very beneficial because on this day it's easier by chanting more and hearing and practicing our devotional service carefully. It's easier to uh, develop spontaneous devotional symptoms. So here on Ekadasi when we have the presence of uh, a great devotee, so we can request Rupanuga. Prabhu Maharaj, to uh, speak something for our purification. So I feel like uh, Kamaduke, by on demand, producing so much nectar, but actually I'm not a Kamaduke. In the spiritual world, because uh, everyone is centered, their consciousness is completely centered on Krishna. Actually, all their desires are fulfilled by Krishna's grace. But Krishna wants us to see, wants us to make progress in this material world to become 
eligible to return back home, back to Godhead. So he's given us a codicy as a day to increase our consciousness of him. And if I can just recall the original codicy preparations in ISKCON, I think that would be my most valuable contribution. <laughs> I remember uh, when uh, I was first introduced to codicy, uh, it was in New York at the 26th Second Avenue, and the original Ikasi preparations were the following. Uh, peanuts and raisins with all spices. That means everything. <laughs> I once saw Shirobhab, but what, I'll tell you a little side story here. Of course, this is about another preparation which we don't eat on Ikasi, but we offer. One day, uh, Shirobhab, I came in the storefront and uh, the devotees were very excited. Shri Prabhupada's cooking breakfast. So I said, cooking breakfast? What is Shri Prabhupada cooking? He says, he's cooking this, this uh, it's, it was a grain cereal that we'll, uh, uh, we'll take for breakfast before we go out to work and do our duties. So, but you can come up. And we were all up there watching Shri Prabhupada cook. So Shri Prabhupada was frying in a, uh, in a pan. And I was watching him going to the spice shelf. Everything in the spice shelf was coming in. Everything, all the hot stuff, the nutmeg, everything was coming. So, but one thing I noticed was that it was a very small amount. In the small pan, the small amount, and I was thinking, of course, wow, we're all going to be hungry, we're going to work, Sassy Ramaj is going to go to the office, Brahmanan is going, I'm going, all the boys are going to start their activities. And we were used to a big breakfast, a big pot of cereal and uh, fruit and milk. So I was thinking, this is real pomp, but it's preparing such a little bit, but, you know, we'll see. So, uh, some, then Sri Prabhupada said, you will be, uh, the devotees had told me before, Sri Prabhupada said, this, a little of the cereal will be very satisfying. So we went downstairs. And later on, uh, this small amount came down, and truly, I took one bite, I was completely satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> and so, that reminded me because Sri Prabhupada put every spice in the cabinet into this. So, uh, peanuts and raisins, fried peanuts, uh, with all spices. Then the next uh, preparation, which was always there, was a fruit salad with uh, yogurt. Different fruits mixed with yogurt. And the other preparation was uh, um, coconut and potatoes. This was a very nice preparation. Actually, what we do was boil a pot of potatoes, peel them. We never offered anything to the Lord uh, unless it was unpeeled. We never offered potatoes with peels. And Kashir Baba said that actually the skins are simply to protect the vegetable from the ground. So we, we took that seriously. So we had potatoes, and then we would separate the potatoes. And some potatoes we'd mix in uh, coconut shavings and salt and pepper and butter that was basically that preparation another preparation we put in turmeric and uh, yogurt so we had uh, coconut potatoes and we had uh, oh and the, th the third preparation was another potato preparation made with sweet potatoes this is called sweet sweet potatoes and that was again simply boiled peeled and boiled and then uh, mixed with uh, brown sugar or molasses. So the three potato preparations, the uh, mm, fruit salad preparation, and the peanuts and raisins. That was it. And the, and the point was that you could take as much as you wanted one time. Everyone was served once, as much as you like, but you had to finish your plate in no seconds. And that was our, that was our feast. Actually, everyone looked forward to Kadasi <laughs> for these preparations because everyone loved these preparations, and you never got them any other time. So whenever Kadasi came, we never looked at it. Sri Prabhupada was so kind. I don't. That came in um, about 1970, I think. So, and, uh, but we always, actually, we we look forward to Kadasi. The other thing was we used to chant 25 rounds. Mr. Sri Prabhupada said on that day should try to increase your chanting. So we encouraged. Now, it wasn't a hard and fast rule. But we used to try to chant extra rounds. And he said, on this day, working is not so encouraged. More Just preaching and chanting and extra reading. It was a day that Krishna had given for uh, increased facility 
for developing Krishna consciousness. So I'm reminded of that. That uh, you kind of see. Uh, and then, of course, over the years, gradually these things. But I'd like to see that reinstituted. It was very nice, simple preparation that everybody was always very satisfied, even though we only were allowed one helping. It was a, sort of like a discipline <laughs> that we all liked that. So that's about all I can remember about Ecodicy for now. I want to request the cooking department and next Ecodicy we have those preparations. And it would be a great, uh, great thing for me. I mean, I remember all that and I think everyone would enjoy them. I can help prepare them. They're very simple. You don't miss, you don't even think about grains when that, those nice preparations. Potatoes are the king of vegetable. We always took that seriously whenever we could prepare potatoes in different ways. And it, in this country, people think potatoes are like third class or something. But actually, in Vedic culture, potatoes are considered to be first class. So many different potato preparations. So we had three potato preparations on economy. Kind of sees a, uh, an opportunity to make advancement in devotional service. <laughs> so we look forward to every opportunity. Also, we used to fast. We also used to fast one time. Skip breakfast. That's what I just mentioned. Srila sure, Prabhupada said, for us, feasting and fasting, it's all the same. <laughs> our fast, our feast. Every fast ends with a feast. Yeah. and every. <laughs> but even the fasting itself is uh, a feast for us. It's all one. It's all t- for the service of Krishna. It's all a festival. Decorated with uh, paper and tinsels, and there's not enough festivals. <laughs> now we need traveling festival also. Very nice. That's wonderful. That should become a zone of That's a very good thing. Actually, we had a Prabhupada Lila Smaran here. But uh, that'd be a nice thing is actually before that to take Prabhupada on a procession. Yeah. Can it, should the Prabhupada fit through any of the doors easily here? Can he fit through the door? Well, sometimes, you know, 
You want to take him out dignified. <laughs> I don't know how he came in. <laughs> but that's that was very nice in uh, New Taliban. They took him on a morning walk with all the devotees. In both places, you were present when Prabhupada was there. So you no, I wasn't in I saw your picture here in Atlanta. So you would know where... You're the, you can tell us where Srila Prabhupada went. Any other questions? Yes? No, they've already announced me going to uh, Toronto. We're going to meet, I think Hari K. Swami will be there. And we're going to meet him and then uh, add some disciples there that need to get second initiation or something. So they were asking if I could come up before I left. Nithaya Guru Premanandi Hari Hari Bo. Today the deities look uh, happy. <laughs>